it's still available. <laughs> so if anybody would like to buy that for Beth, she is ready, willing and able to take that off your hands. Josh, how about you? Well, I'm still wondering why Elliot didn't ask for Beth's autograph personally, but um, he didn't ask for mine either, so at least at least I'm not been put out. Oh, my favourite moments. It's so tough to choose, isn't it? We have such a great time here on Radio Badminton. Uh, I mean, Rory Bremner, he came back on as a guest earlier today, didn't he? I caught up with him just after his commentary stint on Thursday, I think it was. And what a passionate man he is. I mean, he's so, so into this sport, which a lot of people might not realise, but you had a chat with him earlier, didn't you? And he's so passionate about not just being here but really engaging in the sport as well and you can tell that he's clearly very into the fact that his daughters do it and it's a, it's a real family activity for him so that really shone through who else let's see I, I spoke to uh, a telegraph columnist earlier this week Alice Manners she's taught me absolutely everything to know about fashion I have to say it did sort of go in one ear and out the other if you see me today you'll know that um, who else? I mean, the competition. We can't we can't shy away from the competition, can we? We we saw what I think. In, I've only been here a few years, but that's definitely the best day of cross country in terms of excitement that I've ever seen. Um, and witnessing Michael Young. I mean, there was there were so many great rides yesterday. Tim Price. I mean, that was astounding. Everybody gave him a big round of applause when he came in. But witnessing Michael Young's in the flesh as he came in that moment, it really gave me chills. Yeah, there were so many great moments, and I know it's, it's probably the worst question anybody could ask actually is what's the highlight of uh, your badminton because there are so many great elements for me I think it's been um, just catching that sort of combination of the top flight competition and uh, just getting a, a taste of, of life here and the people that travel around the world to come to this every year to make it part of, of their lives whether they're competing whether they've got connections with the uh, competitors whether it's just a lovely family outing for them as well um, one of the, the other elements of, of badminton that people might not realize but um, is really key to sort of uh, bring up here again is that every year the event chooses a, a charity an official charity um, that they allow to have a platform here not just to raise awareness but to raise money as well an event mobility was the official charity this year and um, they've been raising some amazing money for their work they basically give uh, uh, those that may be not able to access the the terrain of the cross country um, scooters to, to get around to buzz around the site here so they can enjoy the sport as much as possible um, they've been doing um, a great job here letting people understand how they work, why they work, and uh, they've been uh, a real pleasure to speak to. So that has definitely been one of the highlights for me. So show jumping getting underway very soon. We'll be crossing over to the commentary team, the main arena here at the Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials right after this break. So the uh, first one going past the West End, it's going to be a Calvino, Calvino, the second is a Tom Calvino, the group line is going to be a group by uh, Mrs. Waits and Mrs. Waits of the Ekman Hacker Training, followed by Gasset Cool Touch, Mr. Daniel Chestnut Gelding, Daniel, 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 Daniel Justin for New Zealand, owned by Teresa Keller and Daniel Justin, and then for Green Island, it's going to Austin O'Connor on uh, Kilpatrick Night, this is uh, Tom Calvino, Tom Owned by Wendy Foster. Next to is the McGuinness, this is a 15 year old Bay Gelby, owned by Jim Newton, owned by Jim and uh, Cal Wolfhall. And next to go is uh, Peter Bernalli, riding Queen Dwyer. And then followed by for Italy, Pietro Sandy of Mouse. It's Radio Badminton, and I'm not afraid to say it's a little bit like a ghost town down here at the Radio Badminton studios because everybody's focus is up there with you, Rupert, in the main arena. Indeed they are. Welcome on a lovely May afternoon. Sun shining, joined in the commentary position by Harry Mead and Daisy Barkley, looking out the window, waving at their friends who are parading. And uh, some of the horses are proving a little reluctant to do so, Harry and Daisy, aren't they, as they try and parade uh, the uh, initial 
group of uh, competitors coming past. Tina Cook gave uh, uh, Harry a big wave as she came round. Of course, she'll be in action again. And uh, who's that just going past uh, there? Sarah Bullimore. Sarah Bullimore. I, I, I think with this, it's, it's a great tradition. It's lovely for the crowd to be able to see the horses up front. And these really are the equine stars. They're such wonderful athletes. And seeing an event horse, a, a four-star event horse in peak condition is a lovely sight. You can see the Bowski on the corner here just getting quite wound up by the crowds. But the key thing here is to try and keep them moving. As soon as the horse, as soon as the horse has to stop, uh, they get wound up. So if you can time it so that you don't get bunched up in a queue, but you possibly come in a bit late and can just keep walking around, then uh, then they tend to keep their cool. Well, um, Beanie Sturgis is having a handful. John T. Evans is going past. I think he's probably thinking, well, I just feel a little bit frustrated because of that mistake on the cross country. Um, Daisy's leaning out there and whooping and a hollering, trying to get Beanie to fall off, aren't you there? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, some of these horses just do get really lit up. And you saw Austin's horse was doing a beautiful pier. Um, Beanie's horse was just ripping the reins out of her hand, and I thought if he drops his head, um, she could hit the hit, hit the hallowed turf of Babington. But um, no, they, they all get pretty lit up. And I, I, I just know if you're in the top lot, sometimes the parade isn't always your favourite thing to do. I mean, some horses can come in here and get really buzzy, and you don't want that before they come into the main arena. Harry argues with me about that because. Well, we're just going to have a little turn on that. I, I think there are pros and cons. I actually quite like this. This, for me, if you're jumping in the afternoon session, is almost like an arena familiarisation, like you get to do before the dressage, but with the crowds in place. So, you know, in some ways, with a very sharp horse, you can come in, bring them in, and, and just get them to go once around the arena, where when they go in the second time to jump jump around the course, they are then concentrating on the fence because they've been to all, all parts of the arena already and done a bit of a recce. Or they may have had such an enormous meltdown, you can barely ride them <laughs> true I, I think you yeah, if they're particularly if they're feeling a bit flat this gets the adrenaline going through them which i never think is a bad thing and they're all different these horses and they all re react differently to it i mean i have to admit to borrowing um a horse from um from the hyams who um used to be the stud groom who used to be the stud groom here and they very kindly lent me a horse a little colored cob and actually what well, it's done pony and um and it just kind of slightly saved the day for me because their mind was much more relaxed and, and jumped very good clear show jumping so that was a relief well the crowd are definitely uh, buzzed up here and uh, ready to enjoy the final 20 about to beginning very shortly the band of the royal marines are now exiting the duchess of of uh, cornwall. cornwall has arrived uh, in beautiful white Mitsubishis. She's taken her place in the Royal Box and all the uh, uh, members in there seated as the Royal Marines Band exits the arena with the last of the horses that were part of the parade. Matt Ryan is also part of our commentary team towards the year uh, for this final climax of this year's event. Just watching John T. Evans proudly sporting his Irish cap, giving a big wave as he goes and uh, there's Andrew Hoy leaving, just a couple more to leave the arena, but there's not a seat to be had here in the uh, main arena ready for this show jumping climax, getting underway very shortly. We're primed, we're ready. Matt Ryan is here. Uh, there is a, so, there we go, water ready for Daisy to keep, because uh, we've now had, this is the first time we've had all windows open in the box. It's been like shutting a dog in a car. Got to yeah. make sure. That, actually, that, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Daisy. Uh, Harry. <laughs> anyway, Matt, welcome. Um, are you excited? Uh, I think you're on air. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. There you go. Happy days. Are you excited, Matt? Oh, yeah, excellent. I mean, we are... In for a, a treat, I reckon, these last three so close together. I've been hearing people tipping Michael. I've been hearing people tipping Ingrid. I've been hearing people tipping Andrew. And I'll tell you what, there's been a few people tipping um, Tim Price as well. well uh, no, they come up from four. No, 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 no. So, who... OK, I need a one... I need a... Well, not quite a one wonder. So, uh, I'll start far and Ladies first. Daisy, who's winning? Ingrid. Uh, and... Give me more. Ingrid, Michael Young, Andrew Nicholson. Right, so it's going to stay as it is. No, and they're, are they all going to be there to the lead equestrian He's covered our sport in the Olympic Games, the World Equestrian Games, the European Championships, and of course the regular annual highlights such as Babylon. He's presented equestrianism to millions, bringing the drama to those with much knowledge and those with little. 
Mike has decided that the time has come to hang up his television microphone. Happily, he will continue to do a public address commentary at other events. We welcome Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, who is patron of the British Equestrian Federation and is making this presentation on behalf of all the shows and events where Mike has worked for television. She's accompanied today by Hugh Thomas, the Director of Babington, Liz Inman, the Director of Burley, Lizzie Bunn, the Director of Hickston, and Lord Vesty, Master of the Horse, representing Olympia and Royal Windsor. Ladies and gentlemen, he deserves your applause. Mike Tucker, the voice of Equestrian Sport. that he is going to be the lead or a commentator in any uh, regard and it's the end of a great career the iconic voice huge amounts of wisdom and he's been a true servant to the sport and he's uh, so passionate about this particular event as well lives not far from here and uh, will still his vo voice will still be heard at various places but just not on the uh, main if you're listening overseas on the uh, BBC here where he is the lead equestrian commentator and of course here in Britain it is being covered on the BBC this afternoon and uh, their coverage and we'll be bringing the final stages and as the uh, Royal Party now leave the main arena Duchess of Cornwall doing that with uh, Lord Vesty, Hugh Thomas the event director and going back to their seats in the main grandstand and there's almost a sort of sense of hush and reverence extending over the arena as we get ready with uh well i i've just really uh, if he keeps coming on back he's, he's soon gonna he can come here with a bus pass already but it's jean tolaire at 63 who is going to be the first of the final 20 to get underway as the uh, Arena is now just being readied. Photographers all moving into position to get the snapshot. We have got a perfect position for the finish line because they're jumping directly towards us and we're no more than probably 20 yards from the finish line in our commentary position. Now, quick thoughts on the course that they're going to face as John Soler comes into the arena. Um, Matt, what did you think you were with us in the first session, but what did you think of the... the yeah, the... I kept a close eye on it. I'd walked it earlier um, and we thought it was a little bit on the big side. Interesting, I just checked how big it is allowed to be. Now, in the program it says 125, um, but I see here on the map it's at the height is 130, so I'm not exactly sure if it's 125 or 130. It certainly looked quite big, quite upright, and those oxes looked pretty square to me. Um, but surprisingly, there, although there are a few rails coming down, there were no disasters or anything. Um, well, Irish rider Austin O'Connor had a bit of a, a um, wild time, but he survived. Ben um, Way also had a few problems. Daisy? Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the standout combination to ride was the Oxer, the lodgy funded Oxer, and the five short strides down to the Mitsubishi Vertical. Oh. Okay, we've just seen Jean Zeller come into the arena and have the first fence down. He had a rather quiet canter. Big horse. Oh, in talking about that quiet canter, I mean, we also did see that if you dawdled around this course, you were going to pick up time penalties. Um, maybe John Tullure isn't really concerned. He is in 20th place and not going to threaten the leaders. He just like to keep his horse in a nice rhythm. <laughs> there goes our second rail. Um, but certainly for those leaders, um, you know, they're going to be, have to be very conscious of the time, not waste time. Uh, there's only a few places where they can really accelerate between the fences uh, and then stay there. You can't rush into these fences. They are a little bit big. They are a little bit upright. And there are a certain amount of set distances uh, that they've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, we saw Andrew Hoy take a stride out in between a combination that was meant to be five, and he actually did four, which didn't, didn't work, work very well. Um, so you've got to be a little bit careful. This, these are big horses. I mean, Jean's not a tall man, but this is a big horse, and he is definitely having a bit of a rattle around here, not looking as athletic as he might have done before the cross country. Oh, and that was the combination we were talking about. That's fences 9 to 10. It's, it's a steady 5, and boy, he had to work hard to close him down to get that fifth stride in. These horses, when they've had a big old run the day before, they are really hard to get them short and bouncy again. I mean, 
Jean is an absolute superstar rider. He's, he's years of experience, and he's struggling to get this horse athletic. And actually, it's a, 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 an option for the warm-up that people like to do nowadays is often to bring them out in the morning, give them a little bit of a show jump, and then get back on them a couple of hours later for their round, because that gets both horse and rider in a show jumping mode. One didn't used to do that because you'd think it would take up more uh, energy, but it's quite a good idea. Well, so four rails down there for Jean Teleur, unfortunately. 16 jumping penalties, six time faults as well. Uh, so he finishes on 99.5. Four. Indeed he does, and so he is slipping down the leaderboard. That means that, uh, well, that rider's loop moving up into the top 20 with that uh, difficult round for Jean Tulaire as he slips down. But uh, next to go is, I'll tell you what, she's had a dream week. Lydia Hannan and My Royal Touch because she's starting on a score of 74.3. A wonderful day yesterday, this horse that she's brought through the ranks and she's quitted herself incredibly well yesterday and uh, she scored uh, 29.2 time faults yesterday and is about to get underway with her round as she starts and my Royal touch, what a week it's been for her, the Oxfordshire based rider uh, she will remember this for a long time. Let's hope that she can end on a real high and go clear here. So she started off in a very purposeful canter. We we're talking this morning that this is a big arena, one which you don't get to you don't get to practice in arenas this size normally. That the national classes and smaller international events take place in arenas which are much much smaller. Even international show jumping classes, this would be a big arena by their standards. So. The canter you need has to be forward and purposeful, otherwise you'll be hanging around and getting time faults. But the forwardness wants to be in power, not just speed. She's coming up the fence six now. This is a water tray, and it's not just a water tray underneath, but it's got pools of water on either side of it, uh, and it can really spook the horses. You think event horses aren't worried about water, but it is surprising how often those water trays in the show jumping course can really spook the horse. But she's clear. She's now further on in the course, that's over fence eight, and so far no penalties, everything's being left up. Now approaching fences nine and ten, which is a, a shortish five stride distance. She's over the first ox and just gonna have to sit up and wait, but that was very neatly done. Gives fence ten a bit of a rub, but, but nothing serious. Well, she's uh, had a good run with this horse and uh, finished third in the Blenheim event at the end of last year which really put her on the map with this horse as she comes down the final line and uh, she is going to be i think just all right as far as the time is concerned one or two were outside just pinging the last fence and what a way to end for lydia hannon what a performance and just outside the time sadly for her but uh, just well less than two tenths of a second outside the time but all fair and all's fair, Daisy. That was a terrific performance from a young British rider. Absolutely terrific. And for her debut performance, that was outstanding. She's done a double clear, one time fault. She rode with such maturity in there. She kept such a cool head. She didn't let the time fault thing rattle her. One time fault, that's going to be nothing in the big scheme of things. She should be really proud. She took a bit of a risk coming down to the last fence. It's a regulation seven stride from its 12C to 13, but she actually did it in six. It looked great from here. She obviously just let her horse roll on a little bit, and it possibly is an option for, you know, if the riders are a little bit worried about making the time, maybe they could cut a stride out. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, it might be a bit risky, too. Well, you've got to give her full credit. Top 20 finish for uh, Lydia Hannon in her first badminton. That is uh, uh, an outstanding effort from the 28 year old well i think he probably was a little bit frustrated after yesterday because he posted a phenomenal dressage score uh, for christopher burton now coming into the arena on graph liberty and uh, that's 32.9 opening total leading at the dress size the third best dressage score in badminton history but it just went a little wrong for him yesterday and now he is starting on a score of uh, 69 point three the australian winner of burley last year where he had four fences down on his way to victory which was a, an extraordinary result in the end given the uh, dominance that he's shown in the first two days but on a different horse than this one and his show jumping round has begun the second fence so far hasn't was causing problems in the morning on his way Harry any thoughts on this guy so he's um Chris is a very good show jumper he has 
real control. He's quite dominant in his way of training his horses, but they listen absolutely to everything he says. And as a result, he rides with real precision. And that dressage test was extraordinary. And then he just had a, a cup. Which fence was 15? He had the uh, the Hilden water pond was the problem yesterday. Oh, and just he, he's just had that rail. That is fence number. It's a fairly innocuous number eight and, and upright, which is a small fence, but the horses sometimes catch their eye. Just the crowd catches their eye just beyond the fence. So we've seen it come down a few times this morning. As he turns now, Keep fence number up. 11, he rattles, but is clear of that. And as he makes his final sweeping turn, just the horse disunited, losing a bit of power, jumps into this treble. Two, one stride in, two short strides coming out, but he's clear of that as he heads down to the last. Sits up and clear, so he finishes just over the time with one fence down, one time penalty, a finishing score of 74.3. Well, he will stay in 18th place, just ahead of Lydia Hannon, who is in 19th. John T. Evans went clear earlier in the morning session. He's currently in 20th, but one fence down and a time fault, 74.3 but obviously it's slightly disappointing for Christopher Burton, but clearly Graf Liberty is a horse uh, that's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with, competing for the first time here at Burley, but a top 20 finish for Christopher Burton and Graf Liberty. Now, uh, there is a prize. I can't remember what it's called um, for the man who, or woman who makes the biggest move from the dressage to the, in the cross country the, up the league. The Glen Tool Trophy. Did you win it? Me? Mm, just checking. Are you assuming my dressage was that bad? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, actually, Sorry, I, I haven't won the Grand Tool Trophy, but I do know that there are a couple of Irish contenders. I think. I think. Um, the, the, he went 57. He went Joseph up, Murphy is. Yeah, he went up 57 places. So Harry, did you win it? I did win it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Was your dressage that bad? Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have done. Which horse did you win? I, it on? I won it actually the year I think when Toddy won. And I think he, or maybe he, he finished second, and he and I were, um, he, he was the next one. If I hadn't yeah. won it, he, he'd moved up one place less than me. Oh, well. Anyway, but we talk about Joseph Murphy and Sportsfield Othello. It was a wonderful round yesterday uh, to make that move from uh, way down the leaderboard in 75th to current position of 17th. So that is a, a big leap, and he's on his way now. Sportsfield Othello. A 15 year, 16 year old Bay Gelding and Joseph Murphy, a 40 year old Irishman, on his way. The show jumping record is probably best to describe it as scratchy. Joseph's such a pretty good show jumping rider. Just having to work quite hard from the first three fences. The horse turns, jumps across the arena, and then makes a sweeping right handed turn with his back now to the collecting ring as he rides down the hill on eight strides to fence seven, a tall vertical, and turns in nice and tight to the rustic upright towards the crown, crowd before sweeping left-handed to this wide oxer and then a short distance, which a horse with a slightly short stride is almost built for that distance. Clears perfectly. He's clear so far. He hasn't wasted He's any time. Good for time at the moment. We're sort of saying about 12 seconds heading into the uh, final combination seems to be a way you need, don't need to be quicker than that. And he's definitely quicker than that. So time should, shouldn't be an issue. That's a perfect example of how sometimes giving you a tight time actually improves the performance because he had a gun to that horse's head all the way around there and he was he was he was fast and accurate. He, he rode with real purpose there. He was dead on his lines. There was no sense of um, uh, waiting for something to go wrong. He had he had a good active canter, um, but nice and tight. And if you if you ride the tighter lines, often it means you ride with a bit more purpose, less floaty. Well, he was 25th in uh, 2015, and uh, also in 2016 they were 40th, so this is uh, going to be a much better finish. 17th he is currently, after uh, on the, uh, with that final score of 68.0, and you never know, that might see, he might go up the leaderboard. I mean, it's nice to also see that from the first day's jumping, that Imogen Murray and Ivor Gooden are now back into the top 20. Uh, they are currently... 
listed on my rankings as 21st. Okay. <laughs> it says here, um, but, wait, but that could change because they were clear, but it, they started in 74th place and have moved up uh, after the dress -off. Oh, I see, actually, John T. Evans is now into yeah, the top, he's into the top 20. Yeah, indeed. Um, although 68.0, Joseph Murphy, the best so far of the completed riders, and Lauren Kiefer is the next rider in. The American, she is coming in. No, she's not. Oh, no, it's Mark Todd. I've got ahead of myself. <laughs> Lauren Kiefer and Mark Todd. Mm. Mark Todd on, how do I pronounce it? Leonidas. Now? Leonidas. Leonidas. Still didn't call it that. I still called it Leonidas this morning. <laughs> I'll, I'll, get, I'll let you do this one, Harry, my Greek <laughs> philosopher. <laughs> we saw Toddy just riding around to all corners of the arena, so it's shown the horse to crowds so that he can now focus on the job as he turns to fence four, the upright planks. He rides down the diagonal line towards a double. He's got an oxer coming in and a vertical coming out, but she jumps very nicely. He steadies, controls the outside shoulder as he turns right-handed, lets the horse see the water tray with a big square oxer over the top. Slight rattle, but clear, and then sits up as it's downhill towards the World Horse Welfare, upright at seven. Again, another rattle, but it stays in place. They jumped clear in the show jumping last year when they finished fourth. To finish on a score of 44.8. Just moving up to this wide ox in the middle. Now he's going to have to sit up because this is a short five strides and the last stride <laughs> had to be the smallest. So the horse was clever to get out of there, but it's not what you would have planned to do. He turns left-handed and jumps a square parallel going down the hill and makes his last turn on the course and is faced with a line of four fences. The treble, one stride and then two strides. He's clear over that, and the last fence of all is a square parallel, which he jumps, he rides forwards, he's inside the time, and that is a clear round for Mark Todd, who finishes on a score of 58.1. Well, the master's done it again, an incredible effort. A 61-year-old won first back here in 1980, remarkably, and here he is, still finishing high up the leaderboard and he's got another horse to come as well so Mark Todd goes clear finishing on his show uh, cross-country score great effort from Mark Todd and, on he can, his and he can finish no worse than eighth so yeah, indeed so uh, Mark Todd will be riding NZB Campino and he is currently uh, in fifth spot on that horse but now coming in it is Lauren Kiefer now this is a horse we were all slightly surprised she didn't go quicker yesterday because this horse has come second at Kentucky four star uh, twice and um, you know we were all uh, thought she might have just had a few less time for us what do you think Matt yeah, no, I thought it was an opportunity Lord lost for her. Uh, I, know, I think she went out there just a bit too cautious. Um, the fact that there'd been a bit of trouble out there, it really sort of uh, worried her. Uh, quite often when I come to a cross-country course and I see trouble out there, if I know I'm on a rural jumping machine that's got the credibility that her horse has, I'd have thought this is an opportunity to shine. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. And, and I, was, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought I thought we could have seen one of the Americans really come up and, and do impressively well. But, but she was just a little bit cautious. Um, um, and she ended up with a handful of time faults which stopped her uh, getting a, a very impressive uh, placing after the cross country. Well, she's starting her round now and 67.2 her score which means that she starts this show jumping in 16th place. This has been a really good Babington for sh showing up the good mares. We've had a lot of mares running. People are often a little bit funny about mares, you know, they think they're a bit more tricky but Mark my words, if you get a good mare, there is nothing better because they really fight for you. So far, so good. She's coming down to the, on the far side of the arena. That's fence seven. Sweeping right-handed back towards the center of this iconic main arena at Bamington. Just takes that Rolex Grand Slam fence. She clatters it in front. It's it been is. quite influential, that, hasn't yes, it, Harry? it never rides right. It's in it every year. It's got rustic rails, and it's normally the smallest fence on the course, and horses tend not to really jump it, I think, because of the plainness of the rails. They think it's a bit like one of yesterday's fences. Yes. They can rattle. Well, she's now got the combination to negotiate. The uh, treble coming to the first part now, and time looks 
a little tight. I think she's going to pick up some time faults here as she's coming now to the final fence. She definitely will. Coming now into the final phase, just picks up some time falls just over a second outside the time to finish on 73.2 Lauren Kiefer but still a first badminton for her the 29 year old but as Matt's Daisy and Harry have alluded to perhaps just didn't give it the one well the full lash yesterday um, do you know at the end of the day also I mean we can sit here and give our opinions but maybe she felt something different maybe you know there's she was riding the horse um, you know we we were all entitled to have our own ideas but Maybe she, the horse just didn't feel quite as gung-ho as it could. Well, whatever. She's still going to be very pleased with a top 20 finish, and it's your first badminton, and I know the Americans have all been very excited about a lot of them coming over here. Well, this man's uh, got a big half an hour in front of him. Well, this was a wonderful uh, round of cross-country from this horse, Kwanzaa, yesterday, and I refer to the mind of Andrew Nicholson on a score of 63.9 and this probably helps him getting a chance here to um, get a feel for the course because you'll be on the rail. Daisy's giggling because right. you started to say this man's got a big half hour in front of him. Um, anyway, Andrew Nicholson is... It's my pause for effect. Very good. Andrew Nicholson is... Don't get the school girl giggles over there, Daisy. This is a serious moment. He's circling, just turning a figure of eight with a flying change in the middle of the arena, going nice and close to the long-armed uh, television stand and around the back of the scoreboard. He did say before his final cross-country run, he got a slap from his wife to make sure he concentrated, which was an interesting preparation. <laughs> <laughs> but it obviously worked. Coming off the left range, this first oxer. She jumps in a nice fluent way. There, who opens out behind? She doesn't tuck. She's good with her hind legs. Well, they athletic and flicks through the back, so the horse is able to complete the jump <laughs> by flicking the pelvis upwards and out rather than cramping behind the saddle. Her show jumping is pretty consistently good. Just controlling the outside shoulders, they jump the water tray and six and then a waiting distance down to the upright along the east side of the main arena close to the crowds and then they turn right-handed and jump through rustic upright before making their way left-handed they jump rather onto the back rail of that oxer of fence nine which jumped it almost like it was an upright and came down onto the back rail He's going to focus now as they turn right-handed into the last line. Just controlling the shoulder so the horse doesn't drift outwards off the line. And nails the middle stripe of all three parts of that treble before setting up, taking a check, slightly wrestling her under control and gets up in the air over the last. So it's just one fence down, four penalties inside the time to finish on a score of 67.9. So Andrew Nicholson will have learned from that. That fence that uh, he had down, fence nine, was the one that really did for Ben Way earlier when he, um, his horse never really took off and he landed on it and gave him, did well to stay in the saddle. But uh, for Andrew Nicholson, he will have learned from that. And uh, when it comes to Nereo's turn in about half an hour's time, and for Andrew Nicholson, a final finishing position, with Tom McEwen about to come in on 67.9, those four faults, and stays ahead of Joseph Murphy. But Tom's horse is it's a fabulous show jumper. I don't know if you've got your statistics there, but uh, this horse very rarely has a pole, and you saw it jump yesterday. I mean, it jumped round the cross country yesterday like it was a show jumper. I've got a statistic here. It says this horse highest uh, is the highest rated show jump in the field on the equi ratings numbers. He's just one pole down in his entire international career, 14 times. He won Brahman in 2016, and this horse is only 10 years of age, and is obviously, for Tom, could be a, a, a horse that's going to be extremely, well, exciting for him over the coming years. This is regarded by many as possibly the nicest horse in British hands, certainly on the circuit at the moment. He's a wonderful mover but a great athlete he's rangy he covers the ground 
and he's a terrific jumper. And he looked extremely brave yesterday as well. Tom, 25 years of age. He's competed. Oh, did you see? Oops. Freaky jump so, over the first. So, so he's going talented. extremely high. He's like a gymnast jumping off a springboard. And some horses, it doesn't matter what the going is like, they feel like they're jumping off the best surface whenever they leave the ground, and others are the opposite. Must be so exciting for Tom knowing he's got a horse like this to help him over the next couple of years. And you can see the confidence because as he leaves the double at fence five, he's just able to move up a gear, perhaps in a braver way than a less a ride on a less good jumper would do. And similarly, after fence seven, he turns very tightly, shaving off every second before jumping that rustic, ox, uh, rustic up, upright at eight. Those horses jump is actually in a different league to anything we've seen today. I mean, it's phenomenal. And certainly, the French he, nine pinged it. He, he, he saw a long stride to nine, and there's a short distance afterwards, so he had to anchor him back, but he managed to do so. And the horse really looking in no danger of touching a fence as he makes that last right hand turn towards the royal box. He uses his voice to say, Whoa, whoa, as he comes down to the last fence, which he clears. Rattles it, but clears and is easily inside the time. Six over six seconds, giving him a penalty score of 66.2 and really a very uh, satisfactory finish to an impressive week. Well, this horse is um, the face of... Chris Bartle must be glad he's got this horse under his wing now because Tom, presumably now, has probably booked himself a trip to Poland in August for the European Championships. Would you, you would definitely certainly hope so. I mean, this is a horse for, with a long-term future, hopefully, on teams uh, if, if he stays, stays healthy. I mean, we're, we're looking towards Tokyo Olympics with this type of horse. You know, you really want a horse that can jump like that with two rounds of show jumping. Well, 10 years of age now, 2020, of course, the next Olympics. Matt, impressed with that horse? Yeah, no, very impressive horse. Um, with it, if you were to pick a weak link in his performance here at Badminton, he just picked up, what was it, 19 time penalties on the cross country. 21.6-time uh, penalties on the cross-country, and uh, you know, to, to improve or to be a, a really effective team member in a, in a future team, we'd like to try to get that level down. But, yeah, very impressive type of horse. But uh, I'm going to give you the case of the defence, my lad, and say that 10 years of age, didn't want to overdo it, and because this was a long career in front of the horse. Would you agree with uh, that, or are you going to... Oh, oh no, you're, you're right. You, you, know, you, you could probably say that for for a long time for a lot of people that um, you know, Blythe I think won a gold medal on an eight-year-old um, so not as though we're about to go out and do that but um, you know, if you're here at badminton it's because you believe you can be I would have thought be competitive at badminton and you know if he was worried about the age of the horse or then maybe he should have stuck to a three-star so no Rupert it's in a sort of way you know, I, I think he's here then then let's let's see what he's got well it's going to finish at 14th at worst so it's still a pretty credible effort whatever it's a very good effort. Toledo de Kerza, remember that name because this is going to be a horse competing many times for Great Britain over the coming years, you would assume. But Tina Cook has competed for many times on the British team. Uh, Harry has been part of teams with her, and Billy the Red is the horse that she's riding. Billy the Red had a few alarms at the trot up, had to be represented, but eventually got through, and Tina Cook is on her way, this being her second horse that she's got through to the show jumping phase and beginning on a score of 63 and 47.4 dressage points and uh, then just 16 time faults in the cross country but this also has a good show jumping record he like um rev de Rue, he's by the show jumping stallion balu de Rue. um and Tina has had a lot of consistent show jumping rounds with this horse. He does actually look like a blood horse, but he's actually got quite a lot of show jumping blood in him too. Just um, interesting, Tina just had to slightly chase him down to that water tray. And you notice when he came into the arena, he had a little drink as he can to pass this. He, I know he's quite a cheeky horse. He takes on his surroundings and can be a little bit spooky. So she just made sure he didn't have a wobble down to that. As she sweeps back past it, this time going around the flowers on the outside of it. And he, he's a very neat jumper, isn't he? Very athletic. and He is. People quite often mistake him for one of the Billy Studs horses, but actually he's just called Billy. By chance. By chance. Billy's the, the funnels moniker. Yes. Trouble to come for Tina Cook. And uh, so far, so good. Although the time's looking going to be quite tight. 
And she's through the final part of the combination. Coming to the final fence, is she going to be all right on the time front? And actually, I think she is, yes. And that's another performance that the British selectors will really be looking at because Tina Cook is such a great competitor at a championship. And what you want is not just the technically great riders, but the ones who can put it all together on, on, on a day. And she's been able to do that on many horses throughout her career. She's now got these younger horses who are going to be her string for the future. And this will be a, quite a watershed moment for her as they come into their own and, and get christened at their first four star. Absolutely, Harry. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I was disappointed for Tina that she she was the traveling reserve for the Olympic Games. And this happened to her twice that she's traveled to the Olympics and not actually got her run. And, and I think, you know, it, I'd love to see what she could have done in Rio because, I mean, that's an out-and-out cross-country horse and jumper. Well, and also her experience, very important to have an experienced member of a team if you're going to be bringing on young someone who's seen it, done it, and she no, definitely no. has, Matt. Ah, oh, yeah, proven oh. team member. I'd be desperate to have her in a team. You've got a handful of riders that have shown that they can handle the pressure. They can turn up in a foreign country, ride a course they've never seen before, make really good anal analysing how the course is going to go right and be very competitive. Well, this man is very competitive. It's been interesting at the trot-ups. Both times he's had to present his horse. It was anxious on Wednesday. It was anxious on Sunday morning. I referred to Astier Nicola and his horse Piaf de Benville. It was definitely some uh, got the vets and the people checking, but all was well. But he uh, was of this horse has uh, done him so proud. Here he is competing at badminton again, a second time for this horse, and they're beginning on a score of 60 and 60.7. Some horses do trot up slightly averagely. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. Um, sometimes, obviously, a horse trots up because it is sore. But the odd horse, you know, if you've got a horse like that, it's no bad thing if the ground droids take a really close look at them in the first horse inspection because then they remember for the second one how they trot up at the first, and they're really looking for a difference. Well, he's had a fence down. And... He just came round to fence two. He was disunited. Which, you know, when a horse can do as good a test as this in the dressage, it's rather annoying when it ends up being disunited in the show jumping. Disunited? Um, yeah, syncopated. Front legs are on one, one lead and the hind legs are on a different lead, which gives you a sense of unbalance. Horses quite often can just not get such a good push off the floor when they're like that. Like a giraffe. If you go back to your dressage, Pammy and Peter are trying to, the horse was late behind. Well, this, take, this case, the horse did a change, but never changed behind. So front legs are on one candle lead, back legs are on another candle lead, Rupert. And Got you it. lose the power there. It's difficult for them to push off out of that squat position. Oh. And he's another one to fall foul of that wide oxer. Just really hesitated on take off, paddled in the air and... But I think, Harry, what is happening, they're all taking that tight line around the water tray and on that line, they're getting the same distance, and they're off it. You know, something has to happen differently, whether they move up or they, they come around shorter and bouncier. So, a uh, couple of jumping errors then for Astier Nicola and his horse, but uh, finished now, and he's going to finish just outside the time, just over half a second outside the time, so there's a time fault to be added. So his final court is, score is 69.7. And he's going to slip down the leaderboard and uh, come into, I think, 16th spot, uh, rather, 15th, uh, yes, 15th spot, and with Andrew Nicholson, Tom McHugh, and Christina Cook all benefiting from those mistakes from Astier Nicola, who now, as I say, slips down to 16th. So, next up, well, it was a disappointing dressage for last year's third, but again, Arctic Soul proved just how brilliant he is around the uh, cross-country course here. And Gemma Tattersall on board on Arctic Soul. Uh, of course, that was an eye-catching performance 12 months ago. And she is sitting on a score of 60, reading down here, 60.2. Uh, currently in 11th spot. You obviously you want to try and win mm. badminton, but then there's various um, criteria that you'd like to fit into after that, and one of them is the top 12 um, get a, a replica of one third of the Mitsubishi Trophy, which is um, three horses standing in a triangle, uh, one uh, from each phase, so the dressage horse, the cross-country horse, stripped from his tack and standing looking rather tired after the cross-country, and then the show jumper. 
um, and they're lovely bronzes. And if you finish in the top 12, you get one of those, and they're real uh, sort of things you cherish. Absolutely. Um, no, something to be extremely proud of. Well, Tina Cook's got one now, because she can't be worse than 12th. But for Gemma Tattersall, she's on her way. She's uh, now coming down across the arena, approaching the double at five. Gemma does a lot of show jumping. Uh, she takes a lot of her horses out to shows like Hickstead and jumps them in a lot of classes there. And jumping at shows like that just gives them so much more experience of jumping in this kind of atmosphere. She's just steadying, coming down to the upright before rolling back and another one's take a tight line you just hear her quietly just soothing with her voice to soften the horse back he is a hot horse this and she has to work very hard to not let him get rattled because once he once he's rattled he's very hard to settle again she's got a forward jump over the oxer at nine and is able to sit off the upright. Gives the next oxer off a left-handed turn, a little bit of a rattle on the descent. Just catching the back rail, but it stays in place. She's clear so far. She's coming into the last treble. She jumps the first two. She's being fairly vocal the whole way through this, but is clear as she approaches the last, sits up. The horse raises his head, but clears the last. And a big roar from the crowd as Gemma punches the air, pats her horse and spreads her... Last year in Rio, with more gold for Charlotte Dujardin and Nick Skelton. Mike, it's been an amazing career and important to you, I know, to finish here at Badminton. Yes, uh, there's been huge uh, family association with the estate. Grandfather farmed here for 25 years. In fact, I think more, actually. Mum was born here. 
So uh, this was always going to be, for me, the local Jim Carmer, actually, right from the word go. And you rode here. I'm amazed, actually, that in some years you rode and commentated. I did, yeah. All in, well, not at the same time, obviously. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Nearly. Yes, it was a, a challenge, um, but one that one enjoyed, because there's a lot of similarities between riding and commentating. You know, it's all adrenaline. There's, uh, you know, you're well aware. But having done it, you could actually put so much more into the commentary. So I really enjoyed that, actually. You always had a, a particular strength of feeling for the Olympics. When did that start? Well, it started uh, in 1968. We were all given the opportunity to go as grooms to Mexico. And I was very spoiled to be grooming Cornishman, which Richard Mead rode. And of course they won gold in an amazing Olympics. And uh, the one memory I have, goose pimple memory I call it, was when I was holding the horse and the national anthem was being played and we, you know, we'd done it, we'd got it, and it was just magic. And I remember saying to myself, gosh, I want a piece of this. It's just fantastic. And that's where it really all stemmed from. You therefore had set yourself an ambition, really, to call a British gold medal. Mm -hmm. But that is very much dependent on other people, and it yes. took a long time to come. My word, it did. I mean, it started in 1996 at Atlanta and Sydney. That was a great game, but no gold medal. And, um, of course, it was London where everything came right in a big way. This could be the first goal for... Yeah! Three gold medals, and it was all worthwhile. And what are games to bow out on in terms of the question success in, in Rio? I mean, sort of the, the fairy tale of all fairy tales. Absolutely. I mean, Charlotte winning back-to-back -back golds was very special. But the one for me that really was the best moment, I think, of my commentary uh, life, that was Nick winning that individual gold. For a man's career who'd gone from highs to lows and remembering, you know, he broke his neck in 2000, uh, came back to the very best form in, on the world stage. On that last day, he did get better and better. And it was just magnificent. Uh, I had tears in my eyes, I'd be the first to admit. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure to listen to you for all those years, to work alongside you for, for some of them. And good luck today. Thank you very much. Very kind. And before Mike does his final piece of commentary for the BBC, he was out there in the middle of the arena to receive a very special trophy from the Duchess of Cornwall. A lip mic, you'll have seen in those shots, that's what he uses to commentate with. And the patron of the British Equestrian Federation, she knows a lot about horse sports and very apt that she should make that presentation. Now our leader in the clubhouse is Mark Todd at 61 years old. He is still going strong. He's got two horses in the top ten, so he rode Leonidas a little earlier, went clear, and on 58.1 penalty points, he is our leader. It is four penalties for a knockdown. It is one penalty for any second or part of a second over the optimum time, which is 87 seconds, and the first horse we are going to see live is Oliver Townend. He is riding Garib. And let us, for the final time, say we are joining our commentary team of Ian Stark and Mike Tucker. Thank you there. And it is Britain's Oliver Turn. Winner here in 2009 on Flint Curtis. Two decent rounds across country, but this the quickest he really did right out of his skin on ODT Garib to finish on 56.2 in seventh place but he's got no leeway whatsoever. Toddy finishing on the first of his uh, two rides. He went out of order with Leonidas on 68. A combination that uh, haven't always had their best results in this really, but Ollie is very competitive. And the course, influential in both poles and time, Ian. Yeah, the time has been very influential throughout the day. That's an unfortunate one down there for Oliver. Um, it's, oh, and another one. This is going to be expensive. It's a very good track, but it's big, it's square, it's vertical. Um, and although it looks a very flat arena in here, there's a gentle slope up and down, and it does make a difference to the horse's stride. The, the uphills, you've got to just move on, and the downhills just sit there and hold tight. Ooh, long way off that. And that's a short distance in there, but Oliver made it look quite easy. He's, um, I think, deliberately keeping him off the rails. Is is asking him for a little bit of standoff, not getting him in too close. 
So down this final line. Another one goes. That's three down. He's already gone down more than three places. He was seventh. And the last. It's expensive. It's 16 to add. Time is all right. So 72.2 for Oliver and Gary. So he goes down seven places. Expensive. Yeah, it was expensive. Just kicked it out in front there. He got one of them earlier behind. And Oliver looks a little bit despondent as he walks out. But a brilliant performance yesterday. He will be very, very pleased with this young horse. Well, now the turn of Rosalind Cantor. She's uh, been one of our uh, top young riders for quite a while. Here last year, she uh, had to withdraw uh, in the end of the day before she'd even done cross country, simply because the horse's heart wasn't in the rhythm that was required. She went to Burley last year, just didn't quite uh, pull off a, a really good finish there. But yesterday across country, this combination really went very well indeed. Rosalind Cantor with her own and Caroline Moore's All-Star B, 54.5, currently in sixth place. She's going to stay ahead of uh, Yoshi Oya for Japan and indeed Mark Todd. She's got to jump clear. Full house, absolutely packed, and we're in for a nail-biting finish. Britain want young stars for the future, and this very much could be one, Ian. Yeah, it certainly could be. She, she did a brilliant round yesterday. Again, she did a great round at Burley. Had a silly 20 penalties across country, but he is a serious jumper. Um, this horse was in our yard for a while with Emily Parker, and I have ridden him on the flat and jumped him, and he... he dare I say is normally very careful. He really wants to jump the fences. And Ross has done a brilliant job with him, both jumping and on the flat. Very good dressage test and a real hopeful for the British team, I should think. Later this year for the European Championships that are going to be held at Stregham in Poland. And it's great to see one or two of the younger riders coming through for the British selectors have a bit of choice this is you may well have heard Claire say one of the disappointing bits of news this morning was the withdrawal of Alexander Bragg and Zagreb they were potentially another pair weren't they yeah and I think we'll see that um, combination around for quite a long time hopefully and the reason he was out this morning is is not going to detract from his future career down this final line. He does jump this horse. All my doing, of course, Mike. <laughs> Clear and inside the time. Stays on that 54.5. She'll remain in sixth place. And that's going to be a good pot of gold for her, but even more great recognition as a future star. He gets lots of height over his fences. He never touched a pole in there. He is always forward, looking to what he's doing. Look at the height behind. So Ros Cantor will be our leading British rider here at Babington. Gives her a great chance of being selected for the European Championships by the new man in charge, Chris Bartle. This is our leader, Ingrid Klimker, in that bright turquoise jacket. I love coming back here and watching the riders go through their final preparations before they go into the show jumping. She knows that the title is within her grasp. If she goes clear, it's hers. The people that can beat her, well, Mikhail Jung, he can. He's away over there on the right. And the other riders you will see are all New Zealanders. So the top five are three New Zealanders and two German riders. And Andrew Nicholson, what a story that would be. He has the record of 35 completions, but he has never won badminton before. Well, this is where every fence down gets costly. The winner of this year's uh, trophy would get 100,000, a record uh, top prize for badminton. The second gets 54,000, the third 42, then down to 31, then down to 21. So a pole is going to be very expensive. Well, Mark Todd jumped a brilliant round earlier on his first horse, and he is particularly good in this phase. 
a rider that's jumped right at the top level at Grand Prix, representing New Zealand in show jumping as well as eventing, and I dare say could have done it in dressage as well had he wanted to turn his hand to that. Such a good eye, an incredible balance. This horse goes with his head quite low, but Mark doesn't interfere with him. He uses his head and neck to balance himself. The Kiwis who've had such a great record in World and Olympic Championships, but just missed out on a team medal, finished fourth, and it was because of this man. Probably jumped uh, one of the worst show jumping rounds he's ever jumped. To drop not only New Zealand out of a, a team medal, but he too out of an individual medal. He was devastated. I think that's one he'll want to forget, but he certainly won't be thinking about that at the moment. Definitely not. Brilliant. His show jumping experience at two Olympics have really helped him in that phase. He stays on 50.4. He gets himself at least fifth place. Could it be more? Well, before we see the top four, let's grab a word with Roz Cantor, the leading British rider here. Congratulations, first of all. And how did you do it? Well, uh, it's just trying to hold your nerve. I've certainly never been in an atmosphere like this before, but, you know, I'm on a super jumper. He is, is really consistent, and he really, as soon as he goes through the start, he, you know, clocks into work mode, and he just really helped me out as well, so I couldn't be any happier. And it's a terrific result, considering this is only your second time here, but a very different experience to last year. Yes, last year we just did the dressage test because he had a heart fibrillation, which so he had to go to the vets afterwards to get that sorted out. But he's been on absolutely cracking form since, and it's just a case of, you know, learning all the time. And you know, I think oh, we've been gearing up for a good result, and it's just a case of getting all three together at the right time. And today we pulled it off. So, well, it could be the start of a very big year for you. Well done. Thank you very much. So now it is Tim Price, New Zealand. Riding Xavier Fair, owned by Tricia Rickard and Nigella Hall. And this uh, Amera went really beautifully across country yesterday. 48.2, along with Miko Young, uh, one of only two to go inside the time. But uh, this uh, the horse that hasn't jumped too many clear rounds in a final phase. He's jumped clear twice since uh, they started in 2015 in eight runs. Very important, he jumps one here, he's on 48.2. He has got one, but not two fences. That uh, being uh, behind, of course, Nareo. A clear round would really put the pressure on the top three. Well, it certainly looked impressive so far in this round, but it's as the round goes on that sometimes Ooh, he certainly saw a big one there. He pushed and got the result he wanted. But it's quite often as the round goes on and, and these horses get a little bit flatter if they're not known to be careful, but so far it looks good. Yeah, this man very much jumped into the world-class uh, status. And the New Zealanders are uh, trained by Luis Severa, one of the top Spanish show jumpers ever. He's a very good man on the ground. As he got this combination wound up to jump a clear round at a very crucial time. Got a jump clear to say ahead of Mark Todd on NZB, NZB Campino. One line to go. Ooh, little tap there, one to go. Brilliant round. Oh, he really has held his nerve. He's got a time fault now. He's got a time fault. But that, I think, is uh, going to keep him in fourth place, 49.2. And he stays ahead of both NZB Capino and Rosalind Cantor. Well, as Andrew Nicholson makes his way into the ring, his countryman Mark Todd is with me. So, Mark Todd, two horses finishing so high. Well done. Yeah, I'm chuffed. It's been a great weekend, and both of them have come out today and jumped really well. Um, they felt really good after yesterday, uh, so now I'm delighted. And you know, and I know you've talked about this, how in Rio it's the worst day of your life in your show jumping around there, and then the horse comes out here, jumps clear, in fact, both of them do. Yeah, I know. I don't know what it was uh, in, in Rio that upset him, but uh, I think he's much happier on grass for some reason, and uh, although he's a bit lucky out there, he, he tries a bit harder. 
Now you've seen this competition over many, many years. What is your prediction? Who will win from these top three? Uh, well, I have to say, you know, Ingrid and, uh, and uh, Michael are so consistent. Um, you know, everybody love Andrew to, to jump a clear round and do well. This horse hasn't been the most consistent, but having said that, everything seems to be jumping very well this afternoon, so you never know. Thank you, Mark, and well done again. Thank you. Well, there's a man who has uh, had 35 completions around badminton, never won it, been in the top three on numerous occasions. Nareo, been a very good horse to him, helped him win individual bronze in the Worlds of 2010 in Kentucky. But uh, this phase has tended to be his weakest. Only jump clear in the final phase on five occasions out of 11 completions. But could this be the one that really matters and then put him a chance of making that dream come true and get that badminton win, which he really, really wants? Let's just remind you. Point eight, not eight, point eight behind the leader. Three within less than a mark. Oh, he's living dangerously. He's almost frightened to see anything watching this. He's going to get one, but that's all. That's a masterful piece of riding in the final phase. Luis Severa has done his job, and so has Andrew. 41.4, his final score. Could be time, folks, deciding this. Well, we've never seen this horse jump for many, many years, jump a clear round. And Andrew did a masterful job out there. Absolutely fantastic. None of us wanted to speak, none of us wanted to breathe whilst he was out there. And Nereo has lived up to his brilliant reputation of being a fantastic horse and a brilliant cross country horse. Now great in the show jumping as well. So to the last two of the Mitsubishi Motors, the Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials. It's uh, Germany one and two, but Andrew Nicholson for New Zealand right up there. Neither can afford to have a fence down to keep ahead. And in fact, uh, two time faults, and we've had plenty with more, could also decide this. Mikael Jung, double Olympic champion, double European champion, and of course Holder, of the badminton title when he jumped clear last year. He's jumped uh, some seven clear rounds of his nine starts in four star uh, final day jumping. But he did two years ago lose the badminton title at the very last fence with Sam. Yeah, he just gave that first fence a little rub, which probably would help. Uh, such a good show jumper and Sam is a very good jumper but he has he has had the odd fence down so we know it can happen oh, and there it goes well Andrew's moved up putting pressure on Ingrid now pressure is probably the biggest danger for both Ingrid and Miguel last week remember he won the four star in America in Kentucky if he'd have won here, he could have set up another grand slam at Burley, but it's not going to be. He has been such a prolific horse, this incredible winner throughout his entire career. At 17 years of age, 
still looks like a youngster and gave a masterful performance cross country yesterday. Time's going to be all right. It's the one fence down. It drops in below Andrew Nicholson and Nerea. So, as final score, 44 for La Vista Texan and Michael Young, German. He can't defend his title, but this man could still win it for the very first time. Andrew Nicholson, I mean, it's rare to get a clear on Nerea, Nerea I should say, but gosh, you did well there. Yeah, and yeah, he's... He used to be a very good jumper, and he's probably got not such a good reputation because he's had to go very, very fast at some very big events when the ground's been very, very heavy. And yeah, and they're, they're not machines, but he showed today that he can do it. And 17 years old, all I need now is Ingrid to help me out. And, yeah, we'll wait and see. The dream could yet come true, which may keep you here and find out. Yeah, down to the last the overnight leader after that challenging cross country yesterday it is uh, ingrid klimka on uh, horseware hail bob for germany 39.6 so she can't afford to have a fence down Maria now on 41.4 so uh, she uh, couldn't afford to have two fine time faults she could have one and still win but she couldn't have two. Bidding become the first female rider to win badminton since Lucinda Fredericks. That was with Headley Britannia back in 2007. And of course, in 2015, she finished second to uh, Chilly Morning and William Fox Pitt. Well, we know this is a brilliant show jumper. And Ingrid said at the end of her cross country round that. She's pretty confident about him in the jumping ring. Little rub there at the plank. But then there's the pressure. There's the expectations. But Ingrid's a pretty cool girl. She's cool. Oh. Andrew Nicholson has, has won, won his first badminton title. Well, well, well. The crowd will go mad with that result. Oh. Well, we've had two of the best horses and riders in the world just had poles down and given Andrew Nicholson his first badminton win. I can't tell you how thrilled I am for him. No, me too. Couldn't agree more. Let's just remind you, uh, particularly those who don't watch the sport on a regular basis, Andrew Nicholson so nearly broke his neck at Gatcom Horse Trials at the final fence in 2015. He's made amazing recovery, and sadly, it's all falling apart. Oh, dear, Ingrid Klimka is one of the best riders in the world, and she doesn't deserve this because she's dropping down now, uh, dropping down the order, and as we said earlier, it's going to be expensive. It is going to be expensive. Poor Ingrid, it has gone wrong. But as well as Andrew, I'd like to just say a, a huge thank you and, and recognize Libby Seller, the owner of Nereo. Good point. She has been an incredible owner for Andrew, so loyal over the years, and she seriously depends his duty. You're absolutely right. To the last. She's going to get time faults as well. It's at 12 jumping and five. Actually, one time. Change that. It's at 13, and she goes on to 58.6, and it's going to drop her down to fifth place. Well, 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 one thinks back to the days of Bratsus, the horse that she rode at championship level for many years. She had some horrible finishes then, but one didn't expect it today. And no, we didn't expect that at all. Michael Young is in second. Tim Price has gone into third, and that is just desperate for Ingrid Klimka because Andrew Nicholson is our new Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials champion. And wow, this sport is never predictable. And once again, there has been the most extraordinary climax to proceedings here. Unexpected, but Andrew Nicholson is our champion and he thoroughly deserves it on his brilliant Nareo. I just feel enormously emotional in two different ways. I'm, I'm absolutely heartbroken for Ingrid because she's so deserved a victory here. But then again, I'm also incredibly 
thrilled for Andrew Nicholson because he, um, you know, he's been he's he's not been able to win this until today, and and to come back from where he's been, you know, that is absolutely incredible and I think there'll be so many people who are ecstatic but again heartbreak for Ingrid well Chris Bartle talking to Ingrid as we speak Harry what a moment for Andrew Nicholson yeah, let's remember that Andrew didn't just have a bad fall he didn't you know, plenty of people break a vertebra and it counts as a broken back or broken neck he had a horrific accident and I mean nearly couldn't walk again it was it, it, it was touch and go it was you know, he was very, very stiff for a long time. Even you know, eight months later, he could hardly move his head and neck when we saw him at the beginning of the following season. For him to have come back from that and then to have waited for so many years, he has completed badminton more times than any other rider, not by a small bit, but by a huge country mile. So for him to come here and win this, this is a bit of divine justice and will put his career... In, it, it, it's almost peace for him. It's now... The CV is complete. Matt, uh, some, some <laughs> Some of what you've just seen. Oh, no, fantastic. Yeah, it's very debatable whether you think people deserve to win or not um, because they've had an injury, they come back from injury. But um, some people that get these injuries, it's not a matter that they try to come back. They don't bother even try to come back because they, they hurt too much. Well, the fact that he is just here uh, riding like the professional that he always has been is fantastic. And, of course, the story goes on. Yeah, it's a fairy tale story. He's been hanging out for this for years uh, and not for the first time a couple of years ago when we saw Michael Young here. We thought he had the title in the bag, has the last jump down. Everyone really considered that Ingrid was almost unbeatable. Her record, show jumping record on this, on Bobby here, was just fantastic, phenomenal. So to have her have two rails, three rails down, and a refusal on the cross in the show jumping here, it's just unheard of. No one predicted this. There is no statistic that predicted this. And that's what makes our sport so exciting, so somewhat a little bit unpredictable. Amazing exciting. And I think it's worth saying that it is a much more desirable um, position to go into the show jumping, not in the lead, in terms of uh, the pressure on you. Obviously, you want to be... Uh, Lead, leading the leaderboard at the end of the cross country but the last one to go does have more pressure and Andrew was able to go in there he wasn't under the, under the spotlight in the same way as he has been the last couple of years where last year in particular everyone was saying is this your year to win it oh, sorry, sorry um, 2015 whereas for him to come out this year in third place he had to jump a clear round he did his job and he was able to enjoy that and concentrate on it Ingrid possibly felt the pressure. And, in fact, he just had the one um, time fault. He knew that he could afford that, so he was could, could be... I mean, not necessarily cautious, Matt. What was, I mean, he was just experienced, was coming I, I, to the fore. I, there's no doubt about it. He would have done the sums. He reckons he could put one or maybe even two time faults. Uh, so he prioritizes the clear round he possibly could, sacrifice maybe whizzing around the corner a fraction, although it didn't look like he was hanging around. Um, but I think he just did a fantastic job. You know, he really knew for him to have a chance of winning this trophy, he had to put those two Germans under pressure, and he did exactly that and it worked to perfection. Was it more dramatic than the 2013 one when Michael Young had the final French stand uh, and handed victory to another New Zealand rider, Jock Paget? And now Ingrid, I think it probably is because the, we weren't expecting either of those two and they both have the same French stand. I think, about? I, I think it, in both situations, it just goes to show that it's great having the form book, but they've got, you've got to go in there at these big, big events and do the job under pressure. And we're here for the story. We're here to see what happens, what unfolds during the week. And each one is the most exciting story. And for both of them, there's a twist at the end and heartbreak for one party, delight for the other. Well, this is why this is the biggest and best of the four stars and proving, as uh, someone said at the beginning of the week, this is the Wimbledon of... Uh, the eventing world it is the annual world championships and we've just seen andrew nicholson uh, beat in the most dramatic circumstances ingrid klimka and michael young ingrid klimka just well it just unraveled in the most well horrible set just all went wrong we couldn't imagine her having a refusal at the trouble i, I just can't no. and i also i don't think tim price probably realistically thought with a couple of fences andrew having a couple of fences in hand that he was gonna get himself onto the podium and there he is well he, here he is yes and 
Mark Todd, well, Rosalind Cantor, she's had a fantastic week. She's the leading British rider this week. As we've got the Parade of the Hounds, we've got the uh, the Beaufort. Uh, I think I see a Barclay member there. Extremely smart and mustard coat. Yes, indeed. My father used to wear one of those. So, um, uh, but uh, used to work with your father-in-law. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the hounds are here, the Beaufort. Who, which other hounds are here? I think the VWH, are they here as well? Um, anyway, we've got packs of hounds galloping around the arena as we get ready for the presentation party. We're just trying to take stock of this. Matt, I, you, you, calm is personified there in the middle between our, our two British commentators here. Um, sum it up from your perspective. How good was that? And 2017, uh, badminton is going to be remembered now as one of the most dramatic ever ah look uh, people talk about the best novels the best movies are the ones that finish with a funny twist you weren't expecting and they're the ones that people talk about so exciting at the end and and you know maybe this this is the the dialogue of a great movie who knows but to end up on a twist like this a romantic andrew nicholson sort of been busting his gut for most of his competition career trying to win this event um and then it looked like um, when he made this amazing comeback from breaking his neck a couple of years ago so close but wasn't going to happen but oh what a twist at the end what a great movie that would make and in many ways andrew i think is uh, you could almost go as far as saying he's been a bit of a tortured soul in terms of how dedicated and how ambitious and uh, how much of a competitor he is. So for him, I think this might be just a little bit of peace in his life that he's achieved the highest goal in our sport outside the Olympics. Badminton's very much the one everybody wants to win. He's now achieved that. His career could end here. If he wants to go on, it will go on. I'm sure it will, but he doesn't, he's not chasing an elusive prize anymore. Uh, there are so many sportsmen and women who are always chasing that, whether it be golf, tennis, you name it, uh, winning that all-elusive first prize, major prize. And now Andrew Nicholson has completed his CV, gold medals he's had, and Burley, multiple winner there as well. But this one, he's come close in previous years, but now finally he can come into the arena shortly to lift the famous badminton trophy as the band of the royal marines have moved into the arena and the presentation party are getting ready to come down with the duchess of cornwall the duchess of beaufort also part of that uh, coming out uh, being welcomed onto the center onto the arena by hugh thomas as they walk out and uh, it is the uh, Duchess of Beaufort and her son alongside her moving out to go and meet the hounds as uh, the photographers have moved into position and we're going to be getting ready for the presentation. Just a fabulous moment for Andrew Nicholson and for Ingrid Klimka. She must be um, in a state of shock as she tries to reflect on what has just happened. And you've got to feel for Ingrid. That is... Yeah, she's dared to dream. You arrive here, particularly after oh, the dressage before the cross country, you're too far away from the finish to really think about what's going to happen at the end of the week. But last night, she must have been daring to dream, and that's been taken away from her. But she's a great competitor. She's been riding in the form of her life for the last couple of seasons on a real purple patch, and I'm sure we'll see her back. Everyone will feel sorry for her because she's a delightful character. She's very popular, and, you know, unfortunately, it is one of those things that happens in sport. And when, when, when would you ever imagine... The Germans losing their competition in the show jumping. I mean, they have been so solid and consistent in the show jumping, and particularly those two riders on those two horses. I mean, I don't think Andrew could have dreamt this is going to happen. Well, if you're watching us, uh, we'll have joined our commentary team here on the live stream as well. We've got Daisy Barkley, we've got Matt Ryan, Harry Mead, alongside me, Rupert Bell, as uh, we get ready for the presentation, which we will be covering here as uh, one or two of the Foxhounds are having a lovely bask in the sun in the middle of the arena and uh, enjoying themselves as the uh, Duchess of Beaufort and her son leave the arena as we will be getting ready for Andrew Nicholson. He's probably he's been hugged by his and children and everyone, and they're probably knowing that uh, had to miss this event when he was still recovering Lord, from that broken do. neck which, as Harry alluded to, was uh, just millimetres away from being a completely life-changing accident. They call it the hangman fracture because it was the vertebra right at the top of the head, just below the skull. So 
and, and, and they had to drill through his uh, throat to get to it. So he was um, speaking so like Darth Vader for yeah. a while afterwards. He's not a big speaker anyway, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's getting more so now. I think he's enjoying speaking. He'll enjoy speaking after this, I can assure you. Uh, um, we can't wait to hear from him. And then we're probably unable to get immediate reaction from him at the moment due to the fact that he uh, has to get ready for the presentation and the Hounds have just completed their... Uh, I would imagine Claire run. Baldings grabbed him. I, I think that he's already been done for the beep and uh, I'm sure now as the uh, Hounds continue on around the arena and applauded by this sellout crowd here, not a cloud in the sky as uh, we still just get over one of the most dramatic afternoons here in the arena and this brilliant dressage with the third best score ever and uh, then the new Eric Winter course really testing all and sundry how good could it be and then with three riders separated by less than a point and then the change with Michael Young having a fence six down and who'd have thought it that Ingrid Klimka would do exactly the same and then further problems along the way I just am still uh, trying to take it all in as uh, they continue with the hunting horn is being sounded and one or two of the huntsmen are having a few problems restraining their horses Whoop, and they probably want to jump some of the fences but yep. uh, your Barkley man's having a few problems Daisy well we have to have quite fierce horses to jump on very fierce hedges and ditches so you know yeah. take the rough with the smooth yeah I remember turning up in the hospital in Barkley seeing my father having fallen off one of those things when I was about six <laughs> I'm terrified of horses horses in hospitals ever since but the hounds now come out from just below us and our commentary position in the northwest of the arena. And now we'll be getting ready for the presentation. Lots of, um, well, big, let's actually, first up from a, I'm going to go parochial for a second and turn to the Brits. Uh, Ros Cantor finishing as she well, did. Um, when we all doom and gloom after the dressage. And uh, Matt. Um, what, what, what position did you end up with? Well, I'm just, I of think, of I've just fifth but I'm just trying I don't know my scoreboard hasn't been changed to confirm Ingrid Klimka's score she went to ninth they read her out ninth ninth okay well she's finished in fifth and uh, that is uh, I think well first time to finish fifth at badminton um, what I love about Roz she's just got this cool head on her shoulders you talk to her she's just very cool and um, she adores her horses and this is just so well deserved I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled for her Caroline Moore, who owns the horse. Has done many roles that have been well, the uh, early presentations for uh, uh, the horse presentation is yet to get underway. One or two other formalities being done. So, looking at the final score, we've got uh, Gemma Tattersall uh, with 60.2. Another good effort from her. Tina Cook, Billy the Red, right up there. So, in the end, not completely doom and gloom. Yes, and I, I think something that's worth pointing out is um, uh, both Nereo and Sam, um, and Nixon and Michael Young's horses, they were both on the, they were both podium horses for the World Championships in 2010. Isn't that amazing that seven years, years on, they are still at the very top of the world, and that's a great example of just soundness, longevity, management from their riders to keep them, because to keep coming back to this level, it's easy to focus on the individual events, but there's a huge attrition rate of horses who just get niggling little injuries and drop out along the way, and that's, to be top of the world over that kind of length of time is outstanding. Yeah, and, but it's, you know, race horses only, but Matt, when you're trying to bring a horse back, because there's... These are marathons. You know, this is this is the, the peak. This is so demanding, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and you've got to be so careful in prepping a horse. I heard that Michael Young he was a, said he was a little concerned that he might have under-prepped his horse for this competition. He'd only done one two-star uh, competition leading up to here. Um, but obviously, you know, you, you know, he's just done a great job to preserve the horse. If you, if you run the horse too often at some of the lower-level competitions, then sometimes you pick up injuries. But it's great that he's got this horse, and here he is zooming around. It's, it's a little bit sad. He's just knocked one rail down again to lose 
lose the competition, but um, what a fantastic horse. And yeah, look, part of being a great competitor is how good is your training, and that means how good are you getting your horse fit and keeping your horse sound in the process of getting your horse fit. That's what horse management is, and, and um, you know, that, that says a lot. But I think quite often, I think people end up doing almost too many prep events or too big a prep event. I know a horse that was here and actually went extremely well. It was clear, had just one show jump down. It just it ran around the Open Intermediate at Gatcombe this spring, and that was all it did. And I, for choice, actually like to come to Badminton off the back of an Open Intermediate because I don't think that but by the time they get to this level, they've seen a lot, they've learned a lot, and actually their last run before they come here, they want to be confident. So you're not trying to educate them more. You're certainly not trying to sharpen them up. You want them to just arrive here with a smile on their face, feeling, if anything, quite cocky. So they arrive in the start box, and they're totally up for it. Yeah, and the good horses, the real experienced ones, like Sam and, and like Nareo, they know what they're doing. All you have to do is make sure that they are feeling confident and supple when they come here. Well, the trophies are being brought out into the arena and put on a table, and the one glistening and shining more brightly than any of the other is the uh, famous Babington Horse Trials trophy. And I have to say, out of all the trophies, that is from a <laughs> purely, uh, probably stepping aside from uh, a question point of view and just from an artistic point of view, it's a beautiful trophy. It's, it's, it's three lovely um, uh, bronze, or now silver for the, for the, main, for the main trophy, um, uh, silver statues of horses. And... I always think when I'm looking for young horses, I have that horse in mind for what I'm looking for. When did they first, did your dad get it? My dad, my dad won this in I know, 1970 and yeah, 1972. Yeah, but did they have this trophy no, then? It's no, it was no. a Whitbread trophy yes. then. Okay, yeah. I'm just checking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I know he won it, but I'm yeah. just checking that uh, um, what the... Uh, uh, well, yeah, it's the 26th year. Well, it's an absolute fabulous trophy there are, and uh, it will be much cherished by Andrew Nicholson when he comes into the arena to receive it and I can confirm that Ingrid Klimka I've got my score in front of me just to reflect she had 16 jumping faults signed seven time faults to finish now on ninth on a score of 62.6 and uh, Rosalind Canton leading British rider fit Mark Tock we haven't mentioned him <laughs> okay that's quite good fourth and sixth um, an amazing effort from Totley again. And quite an earner, because the prize money at Babington, thanks to Mitsubishi, is as big as it's ever been. And uh, to finish in those top few places, there's a lot of money. I think this is some... A hundred grand to win. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, but, but actually, and this is going to sound very... Sort of, um, it's not very important. No, no, no. I think that <laughs> Babington is so yeah. important. And I, I genuinely... I don't know if any, either of you have found this, but I have been driving home and it's only when somebody rings you and, and, and maybe sort of is asking how it goes and then they say how much prize money did you win and actually you've been so caught up in the moment and the excitement and the dream and the childhood ambition of doing well here that actually it is wonderful to win decent prize money and it is important but the dream outweighs that absolutely and also i don't know about you but i'm so superstitious whatever position i was going into the show jumping I, I made a real point of not looking at what prize money there was for that position because I remember one year having a fence down and thought that was 20 grand. <laughs> you imagine if you imagine you're a golfer and every you miss a six inch putt and that could cost you half a million. Yeah. And I just think of poor old Ingrid. I mean, just yeah. where she went and where she ended up. Well, just, from well, 100,000, she's lost 90,000. Oh my gosh. Well, 89,500. Uh, that is just, that is quite, and she's got to go all the way back to Germany thinking about that. Yes, but, but, but she will mind more about no, the no, Mitsubishi I, trophy. She, I, I that, that will be way more important, and for her, mm. this will be the end of a dream, and mm. she'll be shattered emotionally, but she'll come back from this. Well, I really hope she comes back next year and makes amends, well, because this she is, deserves it. It's such a good horse, but coming into the arena now, Andrew oh, yeah. Nicholson is going to enjoy the next 20 minutes or so like no 20 minutes he's ever had in his life before with all his record and all his achievements he can finally now come into the mitsubishi motors Babylon horse trials arena as a winner and here he comes in with the winner's blanket on his fabulous horse nareo coming forward and within second we of course have michael young Tim Price, Mark Todd, Ros Cantor, Ingrid Klimka reunited on a horse, but this must feel, well, the most dejected she may have felt in her career to come in with almost one hand on this fabulous trophy. But for Andrew Nicholson, it's all smiles.
and he is going to be talking ten to the dozen. Looks like he's talking ten to the dozen at the moment. And actually, Ingrid Klimka is just moving to the side of him, and she comes forward and gives him a great big kiss. And he, uh, there is such camaraderie between you guys that she, they all will be feeling her pain just as much celebrating for Andrew Nicholson. One of the really lovely things about this sport is you don't feel that you're competing directly against each other like you perhaps are in um, athletics or tennis or something where you're directly against your opponent, but you feel that you're collectively against the course. So there is a great sense of camaraderie. Oh. <laughs> there's a hound coming back into the arena to cheers from the crowd. Well, I think there's a, there's a bowfoot hound on a bowfoot hound. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Uh, clearly. Because he's probably trying to get back to the kennels. Which... But, 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 but that camaraderie is what makes yeah. the sport, and particularly with a sense of risk as well, I think there's a healthy respect from the riders. It's unique in that when you walk the course, you actually get riders discussing different options together. Although they're competitors, often from different countries, you actually share ideas, you mull it over, and that camaraderie yeah. creates a real family in a and if, Yeah, and if you've had a bad ride through something or the ground has felt treacherous you'll get back and tell people you know just be careful on the turn around defense seven because it was really really skiddy you know well, and anyone who doesn't isolates themselves and they become the ones who miss out yeah. because they isolate themselves from the rest of the team well clearly and as we know with andrew nicholson his testament to the complete lows that you you can experience in this sport to the uh, complete highs of finally winning. But, uh, just reminding us that this part belongs to them, most of the years, except the five in. And the 20, top 20 are coming in. The grooms are coming in as well. Uh, obviously to uh, look after the horses if uh, riders get dismounted. And this, this is a wonderful opportunity for the grooms because they are the hardest working individuals, I think, in any sport across the world. They work tirelessly and they love these horses more than anything. So for them to come into the limelight, it's completely fitting and it's their moment of glory. Well, Andrew Nicholson is coming forward and alongside him is Michael Young on La Biasatec Sam who in his own right has rewritten record books and achieved so much, and Tim Price on his horse, Xavier Fair, in third spot. Those are the three coming forward first to uh, receive the trophy. And for Andrew Nicholson, well, I think he, he's, he's trying not to smile the whole time, but I'm sure that's all he wants to do, um, as Nereo is being as good as gold as he comes forward. The winner of the Mitsubishi Motors Trophy for 2017 is Deborah Sellers Nereo, written by Andrew Nicholson for New Zealand. And the cheers ring round the arena here in badminton and the national anthem of New Zealand is now being played. of New Zealand ringing around the arena again there's been many of course New Zealand winners Jock Padgett Mark Todd of course and now Andrew Nicholson can be added to the role of honor as he dismounts Nareo I think for a moment almost he looked like he was holding back a, a tear but uh, regained his emotions but he's just going to enjoy this arena. moment as the presentation oh, party the Duchess of Cornwall coming down into the arena to make the presentation. And Lance Bradley, the MD of Mitsubishi UK. The presentation party being announced to the crowd here. Duchess of Cornwall, uh, also the Duchess of Beaufort and Duke Lance Bradley from the... He avidly followed the action on the uh, television over the Managing weekend. Managing Director of Mitsubishi Motors UK, long-standing sponsors here, 26 years they've been sponsoring this event makes them one of the longest in British sport and so it will be the Duchess of Cornwall who trophy. will be presenting the trophy goes to Deborah Sellers and Nereo, Andrew Nicholson and Andrew Nicholson and the owner step forward to receive the trophy Lance Bradley holding it 
and it really is as Harry Mead has mentioned the most beautiful trophy with those three horses and Nereo been around competing and Andrew Nicholson finally and he gives the Duchess of Beaufort a kiss and I bet he can't wait to get his hands on that trophy and it will be handed to the rider and owner stepping forward still all trying to get into the right position and here Andrew Nicholson can finally get his hands on that trophy and smile away Lance Bradley holding it and they step a little closer to get the uh, photos and will he finally be able to hold it on his own what a moment for him as he now comes forward but he is now the Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials champion and what a his CV fully complete here this is the ultimate challenge that he has achieved here under glorious sunny skies waiting for the others to come forward there are plenty of other little trophies as well he's had 37 completions now here because he's completed on his two other horses that's not bad Matt is it <laughs> it's pretty good isn't it <laughs> <laughs> which uh, makes him the most successful rider in terms of completions by a long shot in badminton history you look there's a page in the program with a list of the Amada dish winners and he is leading that list as he now walks back to his horse and I bet he gives his groom a kiss as well and a hug and stepping forward now the man in second he was picking up the winner's prize in Kentucky 12 uh, a week ago and here is La Biasatec Sam's rider Michael Young coming forward well he is once again produced another magnificent display but for once La Biasatec Sam's jumping led him to, led her down and it, this obviously arena is a bit of a nemesis for the horse because back in 2013 had a fence down not too far from where fence six is currently this year but jumping in a different direction Matt yeah that's right you know I reckon the Germans are going to be practicing water tray oxes um, um, <laughs> a lot now well, both Betty not both uh, Ingrid and Michael having that same fence down well, Michael Young in second again as I say was second in that 2013 year but he is just uh, well, he's rewritten so many re record books but he's not been able to back up a win here but another ultra consistent effort from his brilliant horse as he now goes back and Probably Tim Price. Harry wasn't expecting to be third, was he? No, Tim again is a, you know, he's a very popular rider. He's he had the disappointment, I think, in 2014. He came into show jumping um, in second place and had a cricket score dropping right out of the order, which wasn't totally unexpected because that was riding Ringwood Skyboy, who at the time uh, had a slightly patchy show jumping career. But again, he's you know he's seen that kind of disappointment. He's somebody who has worked very hard at the sport. He's it's been a long journey of moving to the other side of the world and um, riding uh, rather average horses to start with. Before he's built up this very good string of owners and horses, and able now to really enjoy travelling to the top events in the world. He was at Kentucky last week, and here this week finishing in third place will definitely be a career well, high point. Indeed. So uh, just. Uh having his photograph taken and uh, Xavier Fair uh, finishing in this 11 year old Bay Girding so there's plenty of good days ahead of Tim for Tim Price with this horse who um, is competing I think for the first time at badminton indeed and it's one. a nice um it's a nice advert for British breeding because he's very traditionally bred by one of um, the Catherston studs, Catherston Liberator. So, you know, it's nice to get a British horse in there. And this goes to Rosalind Cantor with her own and Caroline Horn. Well, the big cheer now ringing around the arena because the diminutive figure of Ros Cantor, but she's got a big heart. And she's now going to receive from the Duchess of Beaufort the 
trophy for the best British rider uh, here and um, it's uh, now she's uh, holding that with I suppose at the start of the week would you have given that trophy to uh, Daisy? I don't know she, she's very well respected among the riders I mean, she's diminutive she's five foot two her horse was 17 two but they were an, they, they are a very good partnership and um, and I don't know she is very respected we all know what a talent she is well, to finish fifth as she has and uh, this will certainly give Chris Bartle something to reflect on how well All-Star B has performed this week. And um, should know this, but have I been to finish as leading British rider? Obviously, you couldn't have done that. Ah, you have. What's the name of the bowl, then? Did you receive this splendid bowl? Is that the Jim Brook one? Uh, Matt's got my programme. There's a list of prizes there. Harry, did you win it? I know you finished third here. I mean, you got behind a British rider in front of you, was that? I think I was behind Ollie Townend, so he got it. And there's, there's 2000. Isn't there's something plate. But there's a list of the name, of, but anyway, whatever, it's still an achievement for Ross Count, and more importantly, in her first now the badminton. The, Saddlers, Saddlers, the, rider with the, the best Butler score, Challenge Bowl. What was the gene of the year and has not previously Lawrence won the Rook Trophy. Lawrence Rook Trophy. The best first time. Well, actually, I think that's what she's and about to receive to now. Imogen um, Murray. Because, well, Imogen Murray of uh, under 23, she's received under 25. Under 25 trophy. Well, she's 23, under. I meant to say that. Thank you, Harry. It's been a long week. The, the hound, the hound is still back. Well, the, the Beaufort hound. Yeah. <laughs> but he's having a lovely time. <laughs> It's normally free reign as uh, of the park, but instead there's about well, there's eight thousand people in the arena, and there's probably another Ooh. ten thousand outside. Maybe but, there's a fox in here somewhere. Um, yes, oh, but unfortunately, uh, well, there may be, but he shouldn't be chasing it right now. <laughs> but uh, one uh, of the guards has um, collapsed. Uh, oh. Just checking. Yes, because uh, it is a hot day, so. Uh, Hopefully, everything's all right there, but... Uh, We've got two uniformed guards standing either side of the presentation table. One of them has possibly just been standing there rather too long and mm. fainted. It, it does happen, but obviously that's just a slightly worrying moment. Um, first aid team coming. And... Uh, the presentation just being momentarily halted by this. Lots of uh, the uh, first aid team coming together. So while that is being s sorted, we will take a short break before they resume the presentations uh, for the other uh, prizes in a few moments' time. So the guard getting uh, good attention, and so we will continue with the awards. And we now move to the Silver Jubilee Plate, which goes to the best owner rider. And this goes to Yoshiaki Awa, riding the Duke of Cavan. Trophy. This goes to the horse and rider who made the greatest improvement on their dressage placing, and this goes to Joseph Murphy from Ireland. And he was riding in Jill Murphy's and Ridiculous and Alison Smuts's Sportsfield Othello.
Joseph Murphy just receiving his trophy for his fabulous cross-country effort which saw him leap up the uh, uh, board after on sports field Othello it is called the Glen Tool trophy it was um, I think it was awarded by Lorna Clark it was named after one of her horses and she was very famous for being great at climbing the leaderboard after not such a good test so anyway it is not the ideal trophy to win but it's quite a cool trophy to win Christina Cook with the belly the red. So, Tina Cook coming forward and uh, well, it's giving the Duchess a corner of kiss and looks really pleased. They're in animated discussion, but uh, for Billy the Red and Tina.